In this demo, we will show you the integration of NSX with Kubernetes. To do this, we will deploy a three tier app composed of a web front end, an application layer, and a database layer. The database layer will be deployed as a VM on vSphere, while the web layer and application layer are running as pods, so with containers on Kubernetes. What you see here is the vSphere view of the house. We have our Kubernetes master and nodes running as a VM, and the same for the database. The database VM is connected to a logical switch on, vSphere, on NSX, and here you can see its logical port, and you can see that we are providing the information of the VM name in NSX also. Then if we look at the Kubernetes side of the house, you see that we have a number of namespaces, including one called Yelp app. On NSX, we have a corresponding logical switch and a logical router, uh, and basically all the logical components, routers and switches, that are corresponding to these namespaces. Now let's switch to that Yelp app namespace. We will deploy the application from this YAML spec that I have on GitHub. You can see we have a web front-end spec here. And note that sec group label, sec group web tier. Here also for the app tier, we have a sec group label. And then we finally have an ingress rule, which is our URL we'll access later. So let's deploy this from directly from GitHub using this uh, raw link. So now we'll watch what happens on Kubernetes. And up here you see that we are right now in the container creation phase. So now our containers are being created. First one is already running. The second one is running now too. Let's have a look at all the details again and at the ingress rule. And here you can see the URL that we will access later. Before we access the URL, let's have a look what was what got created on NSX. So we now have two logical ports which correspond to this app server and UI pod, so a container, and they are child interfaces of our VM interface. If we look at the details of the port, you see that we copied all the labels that we had in the application to the port also. And we will use those labels to match on firewall on the firewall later on. To match with the firewall, we group those ports using uh, those labels or the VM name. So in this case, if you look at the DB server group, it matches the DB server port, and it does that by looking at the virtual machine name, which is Redis in this case. For the app server, we are matching on the logical port tag for this sec group. And here we are indeed matching the right logical port. The same for the web tier. In the firewall then later on, you see that we are dropping web to web traffic, which again is identified with these NS groups that contain the logical ports. For the app layer, we obviously want to access our database. So we uh, create a rule here that says all the app server ports, or in this case, those are our containers, are able to access this DB server uh, using that name. All the other traffic is dropped, only DNS and is also allowed. So now let's access our application. And here we go. You see that we can vote for, for our favorite restaurants. And we update the count here. Let's see if our firewall is really dropping here. So we'll drop all the database traffic, so the traffic from the application layer to the database. Obviously, if we now refresh our page, we shouldn't see the statistics from the database anymore. And indeed, they are gone. I can't vote anymore for my favorite restaurants. So what would you do if you have to troubleshoot a problem? We have a great tool called Traceflow. And here, we can uh, select source and destinations. We'll select the logical port of the app server as a source and the virtual machine as a destination. And we could trace now, but what we want to change is we want to send specific traffic, in this case, using the TCP port for Redis. So we'll use 6379, which is the Redis port, and we trace. And now we will see the exact result, which says, oh, we're dropping the traffic. 
we can see that we are actually dropping it by the firewall rule 1085. So let's check on our firewall table and here we see yes it's indeed 1085 which is dropping the traffic. So let's repair our application. We'll allow it again. And let's test if we repaired it. And indeed here are our statistics again and let's vote again for our restaurants. And that's it. Thanks for watching.